All right, guys, welcome back after that short break. Now, let's quickly move on to our, uh, with our program. So we'll be looking now at frequency tables. Right, so let me give you a bit of background. So we are saying here, data can be organized using tally tables or frequency tables. Then also important to note is that a tally is a quick and easy tool that can be used to keep track of how often a data item appears in the raw data. Then when we do a frequency table, right, every stripe represents one occurrence of a particular data item. And we'll put that into practice just now. Then five occurrences is where or are represented by, first of all, four vertical stripes and then one horizontal stripe that is drawn through the other four stripes. Then also, when working with many data items, right, or continuous data for that matter, it is better to group our data into class intervals. And then, important, your class intervals must be the same width. Now, let's quickly look at the first question here. It says, your school will be participating in a sevens rugby tournament. Study the table below on the information of the players and answer the questions that follow. So here we have all the given information and it's always good to take a few seconds, right? Just to look at what is presented to you. So here we have our players one to seven and then we have the age of the players, the height, the mass, as well as the BMI. Okay, so now we are saying Use this information in the table alongside to complete the frequency table on the height of the players. Right, remember now, very specific, even though we have more than one data set, we have to focus on the height only, not the age, not the mass, not the BMI. Okay, so now we want to know how many of these players will be or have, has a height of between 1.2 and 1.55 meters. So looking at the first player, Right? Definitely not within that range. We agree. Now moving on to player number two is 1.7 meters. Definitely not, right? Moving on to player three, 1.62, not within that range. Then looking at player four, 1.5 meters. So I'm going to scratch this through so that I can keep track of what I'm doing, right? So the tally here is one. I'm not done, so therefore I can't complete the frequency as yet. Player number five, 1.75, definitely not. Player 6, 1.56, also not in that range. And then one point, or player 7, 1.85 meters. So therefore, it's only that one player, so the frequency remain 1. Right? I'm moving on to one, um, the heights between 1.5 and 1.65 meters. So I'll start with the first player again, 1.65, definitely. So this tally here will be 1. Player number 2, 1.7, that will be too tall, right? Player number three, 1.62, definitely within that range, so I'm going to tally that one as well. Then we move on to player number five, which is 1.75, definitely not. Player number six, 1.56, so can we see that one, I'll scratch because it will definitely be within this range. So therefore, I count one to three, my frequency becomes three. Okay, moving now to one a height of 1.66 and 1.85 in between. First player is 1.7. So we agree it's within that range, right? So I tally that one. Moving now to player five, 1.75. Definitely also, right? So I tally that one. And then the last one, 1.85 meters. So he will also be in this category. We agree. So therefore, I'm going to tally that. Okay, so if you look at this, we already have all our players. So therefore, there will be no one in this specific range, right? Now I'm going to total this and 1 plus 3 plus 3 will give me 7. It's always important to total your frequency. Remember, we said there are 7 players here. Can you see? So that means we are perfectly correct because it relates to the amount of players. So I hope that makes sense. Let's move on to our next question. Next question says, use the data from the table alongside to answer the following question. So there is again presented to us uh, the player information. So question two, it says arrange the mass of the players, right? This time we're going to work with the mass of the players in descending order. Now guys, it's important for you to know, to study 
your terminology, your definitions, and also to know when to use which formula. So in this case, what's important, we are working with mass, first of all, and then we must understand, we must know what does descending mean. So descending means from big to small, right? So therefore, I'm going to go to my column that says mass, right? So I'll start off, I go and see the biggest number here will be 72. So I'll start by saying 72. I note there's another 72 here, right? So I'm going to list that 72 as well. Then after that, it will be 68. After 68, it will be 66. Thereafter, I move on. Now I see there's a 65 as well as another 65. So I'm going to list both 65 and 65. And lastly, I'll have 62. Remember, there are seven players. So let's quickly check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I definitely included all of them. So important here, descending means from big to small. Right, looking now at question number three. We are saying here that name one data collection instrument that could have been used to gather this information. Right, so here we could have given them a questionnaire. Right, we agree. On which they answered all these specifics there about their age, the height, and so on. Right, and then moving now to this next question, it says, identify the tallest player. So looking at the frequency table, right, so I move 1.65, 1.7, 1.62, 1.5, 1.75, 1.56, 1.85. .5. Looking at this, we can see that the tallest player is player seven, right? Not, we are not asking for the height, very important. It says identify the tallest player. So the tallest player is player number seven. All right, I hope that's clear. Then question number five, what percentage of boys, so we want a percentage, weigh more than 70 kg, right? So if you look at this, the mass, even here, if you look at this, how many of these boys weigh more than 70? You can see it's the two here, 72 kg and 72 kilograms, right? So therefore, it will be two out of these seven boys. Right, I want a percentage, so therefore I will multiply by 100. So I'll take my calculator, 2 divided by 7 times 100. So that will give me, and I'm going to round my answer off to two decimal places. That gives me 28,57, right, and it's percentage. Guys, I hope that makes sense. All right. Okay, so at this moment in time, let us take a short break. After the break, we'll continue with measures of central tendency. See you now.